there's been a spit of easy goals in the National League. And if you thought football people don't like blanket defenses and long passages of play, football people really don't like soft goals. Jermaine O'Connor's against Tyrone is probably the most recent example of this textbook bad defending. Everyone just follows their man and in doing so they part the sea for Jermaine O'Connor. Don't get me wrong, brilliant run, purposeful, powerful, emphatic finish. But a more tuned in defence, they smell where the real danger is and they weigh up their risk between leaving their man and the risk of letting Jermaine O'Connor run right through their heart. It's the same thing that was levelled at Peter Keane's carry. Not having that common sense approach to defending. Not having that common approach to defending. If it's not my man, it's not my problem. That kind of thing. And if you go back to the 2019 final, the replay, Owen Merchant's goal. From the throw-in in that second half, Dublin were able to pull all of Kerry's halfback line out of position. Out of the halfback line. Crowley went in the midfield. Obuglik went further into midfield. By the time Paul Murphy realised and tried to do something about it, Owen Merchant was already on that moped or whatever it is that he uses to get down the pitch so quickly. Inside, Paul Mannion and Dean Rock realised what was happening, so they got the hell out of there and their men followed them. And you could see Paul Mannion pointing at Conor Callahan, telling him to stay out of the way as well. So he ends up turning and going further out and unbelievably, Tom O'Sullivan follows him right past Merchant who came through on goal. Nobody had the thought to close in, converge and just accept a point if they left their own man free. Smart from Dublin, very, very naive from Kerry. Paddy Talley has come in now under Jack O'Connor and he seems to have helped fix that. He's turned Tag Morley into this deep line centre half and it's not all down to Tag Morley but Kerry only conceded one goal across all of last year's championship and that was a screamer from Cormac Costello. But it's not just Morley's position that has changed, his whole attitude has. He seems to be playing with a sort of belief that any score against Kerry is the fault of everyone. That it's a structural problem. That it's a collective issue. He does that really clued in centre back job where, yes, he drops off and minds a house, but he doesn't need or want anyone else back this far with him. If you're behind Morley, if you're beside him, you are too deep. That's what he's there for, and he won't be long in letting you know that as well. Morley's there, you get out and make yourself useful, get your hands on, push them back. The problem now though is that pushing out and making contact isn't as easy as it used to be. Teams used to stop themselves being caught on the brick by keeping players back to mind the house. That was wise for them, but it also helped the defensive team because they were able to commit extra bodies because they had extra men there. They were able to push out, they were able to overwhelm attackers and they were also able to just scare coaches who saw the extra numbers and told their players to get out of there. Now teams stop themselves being caught on the brick by being careful on the ball, by being slow on the ball and to do that they bring everyone forward. What that does against the wrong system or against the right system depending on who you are is it creates one-on-ones even in this smattering of bodies. When it's 15 on 15, you might think it's harder to get that one-on-one -on -one opportunity, but you can see why it does happen as well, because everybody's got a player to mark, in effect. And when that happens, there's a lot of potential areas then to hurt teams, because once one man's taken out, then somebody else has to commit over. But really, if the ball's coming down this side, there is no point in these green jerseys in defence being at the other side of the pitch. They have the opportunity to move over, because if the ball is shift it to the other side of the pitch, by the time it gets there, they can move back over with the play. And that type of shape is also really important wherever the ball is. There's a really good coach, Kieran Roach, who once pointed out how pointless it can be having numbers back if they're not thinking about where they are. If Tag Morley or any sweeper is telling his players to push out, and they push out in a shape that makes them look like this, across the 45, that classic line where old managers used to want their players to be. One simple run can take out four players here. But if those players stagger their position, then they become much harder to break down as a collective. If the man on the ball beats one player, he's just going to be met by the next player. And it gives the first defender the chance to come back in as well. It just makes them more solid and like we said, the depth is more important than the width because they will have time to shift across and if a team goes out wide then sure that's the old classic if they score from there good luck to them 
It's just about trying to shut down more space with the same number of people. But you have to be willing to leave your man. But maybe more importantly, managers reading statistics or selectors reading statistics at half time, they have to be willing to see the bigger picture.